friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design, and I'd like to welcome you to the Stamparia um, Hop. This is put together by my friend Nuneka Box, and there's a whole group of us um, mixed media artists that Stamparia sent beautiful um, packages to, and we've put together this hop, and you'll find the next link in the hop below in the comment in the description area. So I chose to work with the beautiful collection called Music, and I pretty much used it all up except for little scraps, which I will save and maybe have enough to do some cards with or something, but this collection has such a fabulous old world Baroque feel. The colors are just stunning and I loved working with it. And I decided to make a folio. Um, and this is, um, this shows you the different papers that come in the collection. There are 10 papers in each pack, double-sided. You get cut-aparts, you get tags, you get collaged papers. Everything is in here, basic background patterns. It's, they're just phenomenal. So I actually even cut up the covers <laughs> to use in this folio. So this measures um, five and a half by seven and a half. It has, it's a tri-fold, so it has two one and a quarter inch spines. I've added some altered metal music charms on the spine. Um, I just love the way they dangle down there. And then on the front cover, I did some machine stitching on my paper layers, added some um, texture using Stamparia stencils, and I've just backed this on black cardstock so you can see it. You can do just any number of wonderful things just with this one stencil. You've got text, you've got the violin, you've got the wonderful diamonds, you've got music, you've got spots, you've got... Um, this wonderful flourish and I use those extensively you can see the flourish up here um, so I love this I also used and I love their stencils are really thin so they're easy to place and hold in place they work really well then they have this thicker um, stencil where I use the hearts and the checkerboard and then this wonderful leaves and berries that I've used throughout and then even some of the brickwork from this um, steampunk style stamp. So that's the um, stencils that I used here. Um, this is actually the title from the cover of the book. And I've just popped things up in layers. Here I've created a cracked glass effect by doing multiple layers of clear embossing powder, cracking it, hitting it with dark ink to fill in the holes. I've got a little side tab here. Little birdie flowers cascading down, and you see these wonderful sparkles. This is their um, Briantini. It's like a glitter, but it's very soft and light. It's not hard and glassy like a lot of glitter, and I just love how subtle it is. It adds a little bit of wonderful sparkle, but it doesn't like sock you between the eyes and scream I'm glitter. So I did a beaded edge, lots of um, distressing little um, paint daubs everywhere. I wanted this to look very old world because this paper is delightfully old world. So we have a ribbon closure and here is a look. Look at these beautiful chocolate and teal combinations. So rich. And in this pocket I did a little side pocket here, and I do have a tutorial. I wanted to point this out to you. These are just little scraps that I had left over from trimming, but they were too beautiful to throw away, so I just staggered them and layered them on this pocket, added a fussy cut detail, and created this beautiful side pocket. In here, in the collection, you get this precious little envelope. You just cut it out and ink the edges. I've wrapped it with burlap string and a little key from my stash, and then it opens up, and inside I've added two of these just darling little mini folios. 
And these are just from the Cut Apart page in the collection. Um, it's so easy to put a mini album together with these Stamparilla papers. I love them. And then also, this was another Cut Apart page. And I just cut them all the same size, stitched across the top. And now I've got a lovely little folio. And you can use this for journaling. You could add little photos here. You could write quotes or just flip through it as a beautiful look book. I just, just beautiful. So that's the side pocket. On the other side, I created a standard pocket. I used an oval die to cut an off center thumb hole. Then the part that was cut out, I added up here as a tab on my book. Just fun. And then I also used this wonderful, Magna Carta paper. This is a handmade paper. I wish you could feel the texture. It feels more like cloth than like paper. It has these wonderful uneven edges and tears and texture. So I had um, some of this and then I also had um, envelopes, three envelopes made with this same um, Magna Carta paper. And I just took the envelope apart, just carefully separated the seams and then traced it out onto old music paper and designer paper from the collection to create this altered envelope and then I just put this wrapped it with burlap string and an old looking um, brass key from my stash and of course you could put photos back behind here and this flips open and we have our flap page um, this is so easy to do. When I was gluing down my designer papers, I just left the top edge open. And then I used scraps of the chocolate brown that I used to build the folio base and created this little three, I think it's three and three quarters by six. And one end is a little longer than the other. I like how that looks. And then this just lives back behind this panel. So another great place to add journaling or photos. Then this is actually another envelope. I had I found a little string tie envelope. I removed the string ties, covered it with designer paper, and created this really fun flap feature where you can add hidden journaling or photos there. But the heart of this project is in this center box style pocket, which you will learn to build in the tutorial that follows. And in here, I have made a hand-bound um, journal. And I use these Magna Carta papers. The ones I had were eight and a half by 11. So I just tore them in half, then folded them, stacked the pages inside one another. I added three holes with an awl, and then used waxed linen thread to stitch the signature together and I'll show you that right here so you can see so you're going to go down through the center up through the top down through the center up through the bottom down through the center and then you tie your strings off on the top and I left two of the threads um, long and added beads and this beautiful key that made me think of a harp um, and then I covered the front. These are envelopes. The covers are made with more of those Magna Carta envelopes. And I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial. But I covered it with this wonderful rice paper. And I just used Stamporea mixed media cream, uh, no, mixed media glue to add this. Another layer of the mixed media glue on top. And then I sealed, I added my texture paste and all these different things and I sealed it with the wash it resistant finish so it's water resistant and it looks and feels so old I just love this and it's very strong along the spine it just helps strengthen the integrity of the album so this rice paper is very delicate looking but it's really strong and I love how it works this is actually not lace this is made with one of the Stamparia 
texture molds, and I had never used this before, but the cream paste is it's like a really light, fluffy frosting is what it's like, and you apply it just like you would put frosting on a cake with a spatula, a nice thick coating, fill it in. It dries for 24 hours and then it just peels right out, easy as you please. And then I colored it with this pearl. Um, I just used one of the Stamperia daubers and I colored it with that and the contour paint in gold and silver to create this really gorgeous looking antique lace. I just love it. So that's the cover, a little more stenciling here, torn pieces of paper, some layering. And then inside, this is a pocket because this is actually an envelope. And then I've just decorated the pages with torn sheet music, old sheet music that I had, beautiful papers from the collection. I used stamps from Stamparia to add these backgrounds and to add these sentiments. And I will have links to all of these products um, so that you can find them. But this was so much fun to make. Stenciling, stamping, paper layering, torn paper, inking, spraying, just um, to create this really old looking album. Like this looks like it could have been found hidden in a trunk in someone's attic. So I just love this. But this is my project. Um, I have, I wanted to share those little tips with you of how to put the, um, this is embossing powder that I just added on here, Seth Apter, Ancient Amber, just to add that touch of gold to go with this wonderful, wonderful Baroque feeling of this collection. And then everything just folds together very neatly and ties with a ribbon. So hang around, I have a tutorial to show you how to build the base, the basics of putting the journal together, and some tips and tricks. I did not do a complete tutorial because it took me two days to create this project, and I was afraid you would all fall asleep or starve to death if I did a step-by-step. -step. But you will learn how to build the base, and you'll get the measurements, how to do the pockets, the box pocket, all of that. So stick around. I'm happy to share that with you. I'm, I hope you're enjoying the hop. So leave me a comment below and um, let's get our craft on. Bye. All right, let's begin by creating this folio base. And I have a piece of 100 pound um, brown cardstock that measures 18 inches by 12 inches um, and if you don't have large cardstock like this just take two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock and join them together with half inch score tape and then cut it to measure 18 by 12. So I placed this on my scoring tool and I scored this because I want my folio to be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I scored at five. I scored at six and a half. Then I fold this, push it into the corner, score again at five and a quarter and six and a half. And then turn it and go ahead and um, you want to score at the five and a quarter all the way down and then flip it and take it as far as you can. So you end up with this sort of grid. Now, I want this center panel to be a box pocket. So I'm going to cut this along the far right hand side score line, just like this. And cut as straight as you can, and then over to this score line. So that's basically the part you're cutting. And then repeat this cutting on the left and 
then over. Now I want this to be a standard pocket, but see this is way too deep. And this I want to be a pocket at all. So we're just gonna take this square out and we'll use it somewhere else for matting or something like that. Then just cut as straight as you can, but we're gonna distress these edges so you don't have to um, worry too much. I'm just gonna trim this up here. And then this one we're going to trim down. And for that, I'm going to see if I can't use it better. So I get a nice straight edge. I think if I fold this back, I can get this in here. And I just want this to be a two, yeah, two and a half inch, well, let's go three inch deep pocket. So now this is what we've got. All right. I want this pocket, our um, spines are inch and a quarter. So I want this pocket to be an inch deep because that way everything folds over nicely and fits. So we're going to bring our scoring tool in. Place this, fold this down, get this on your scoring tool. And this is seven, so score this. Well, this is seven and a quarter, so score this at eight and a quarter. And fold. And now you can see we've got our box, right? We've got the dimension here. So cut this tab. it over here and cut this to form a tab and then these two side pieces have to be trimmed down to an inch so just like we did before fold this down see if we can't get this in here try to get it straight I'll just trim that to an inch and then turn it and do the same thing on this side. That worked pretty well, so we're going to hope that it's going to work well again. Make sure we're straight. Trim that off. Let's go ahead and burnish all these scored lines. This is going to be just a simple flap pocket. For this one in the middle, these flaps are going to fold in. This is going to fold up. And we're going to trim this down. This is a little taller than I want. So let me trim that down. So you're watching me create this live, which, um, you know, a lot of times I design these First, then I share the tutorial. So I'm thinking I want this to be two and a half. So I'm lining these little tabs up with the two and a half inch line. I'm just gonna cut. Now you don't want to glue anything yet because you need to line these panels with your patterned paper. Measure the height of your pocket, your two and a half. Two and a half. Just use your scraps. This is an inch and a quarter wide. So we're going to score a little quarter inch flap. Fold along that flap. Because we have to have a flat piece 
that's going to hold the sides. Do you see what I've done here? So we have to have a flat piece that holds the sides. So I'm going to just adhere this to the side, this little quarter inch tab. And the same thing over here. Put your adhesive just on the little quarter inch tab. Line it up with your tab. Can you see how I've done that? I'm going to frame. See how nicely that folds up and now we have a really sturdy box pocket in the center that will hold our little mini album and this folds over nicely this way and this will fold over nicely that way so here's our folio okay so as you can see I've lined the panels and the spine of my folio and this strengthens it and it also adds depth and I just gently distress the edges and when you're distressing you're just going to lightly pull your tool you don't want to tear it up well sometimes you do but in this case I just want a gentle distressing if you don't have a tool you can use the blade of your scissor to do the same thing so we're going to start with the center panel and I've created an eighth of an inch margin on each panel so because each section is five and a quarter inches wide the dark teal is five and an eighth and the light teal is five and then this is four and seven eighths so we're going to glue this into place and you can use whatever glue you like And then just kind of line it up and this is short because the pocket is going to cover a good portion of this panel and I didn't see any point in wasting paper all right so we're going to add adhesive on these little tabs on our pocket so we're going to fold this up and take our bone folder to just kind of press that into place on each side and this is just going to reinforce those walls then fold this little tab in and I like to at this point take my scissor and just cut a little triangle off the top of each side and that just hides so that when it folds up you don't see the brown paper as much all right and add your adhesive Press this down. Make sure you're straight on the sides. And then just take your bone folder and burnish everything down really well. And now you've got a really sturdy, whoops, I'm a little off on that side, um, a really sturdy box style pocket. And as you can see, you can't see where that um, designer paper is short. There's no point putting designer paper where it's not going to be appreciated. So now we just double check to make sure we still fold neatly over. And this is why we make this third panel a little shorter. Because if this came all the way over, you would have a hard time folding that over it. So there's our box pocket. Now we're going to take... Oh, I have two pocket fronts. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna take our pocket front. And this is gonna go right here. Make sure I want. Yeah. 
And then I had cut a small piece. But anyway, you get the idea. So you're just going to do the same thing over here. Add this short panel here. Add this full panel over here. And if you want to add, if you had wanted to add, we're going to leave, I'll show you how to do this one. Just put your adhesive on the sides and the bottom. Leave the top open because then you can put a pull out insert in there, which is really fun. Okay. Very quickly, I just want to show you how to add like a little um, hinge to this pocket. This is inch wide cardstock that I've cut to be about the right height. I'm going to trim this one down because the pocket is on that side. And just a little bit more. This just allows you, it makes it easier to put things into the pocket um, since this is just a, a very flat pocket. Um, and it just makes it easier to use. So you just fold your paper in half to make this little hinge, place adhesive. Place it on your pocket. Make sure you're not interfering with the fold. Test it out. And then just put adhesive on that other side of that hinge and press it up. And you're good to go. And then just burnish it down. The bone folder. So pretty. And then I had a really thin scrap that I wanted to add along this bottom. There it is. Is that it? Nope. Well, anyway, I'm going to cut a thin strip. Just as I did over here with this um, music print, I want to do a thin strip right here just to add some contrast to the pocket and make it more interesting. Now we're going to build this side pocket. This is super simple. So I've just got a piece of this um, beautiful music paper and I have cut this to two and a quarter by six and seven eighths. And this was a scrap, but it just happened to be the right size. I like to use my scraps and we're just going to adhere this. on your left hand side and it's okay that it's um, I just stressed it and you can see it's a little torn up there I like that look makes it look old and that's a good thing okay so then here's a brown piece also a scrap this is three by six and seven eighths and I've made a couple of these little hinges because this is going to be a pocket just going to adhere these on the sides again just so that it's easier to get things in and out of the pocket that way all right and then add adhesive along this bottom edge on your flaps. Oops. And then just line this up. Make sure I'm straight little crooked so I'm just going to lift this, straighten it out a bit, that looks good. And just burnish it down with a bone folder. You can see you've got a nice pocket here. So you can dress the pocket up. I'll show you what I think I'm going to use. This is a texture mold from Stamparia, and I'm so excited about this. I've never used this before, and I 
put a generous coating of cream paste on here with a spatula. You can see that's a pretty good coating. Then you let it dry for 24 hours. And then look at this. This just peels off. And look what you've got. You've got this incredibly fabulous, beautiful texture and dimension. I'm going to color this up and then use it to line this pocket. I think it's gonna look stunning. So this is really fun. And from here, you're just going to do your cover. And then your back cover. Before you do that, you're going to add your ribbon closure. Um, and I haven't gotten that ribbon out yet, but I will. I'll just show you a couple more things and then um, we'll build the little book that goes inside and we'll be done. I've trimmed away the extra from the sides and now I've just got a little bit of um, blue acrylic paint. I'm thinning this out with a little bit of water. And this is one of their daubers, and I'm just going to add some color here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put this little book together. I have two of these Magna Carta envelopes from Stamparia. And we're going to take a little bit of adhesive on the inside of this flap. And we're going to tuck it inside the envelope, just like that. And try not to get glue all over yourself like I just did. Then we're going to put on the outside flap of the second envelope, and we're going to tuck this in and line it up. And then just burnish it down. And we have now a cover with two pockets on each side. Isn't that beautiful? And this paper is. Fabulous. So then I used the, oops, also Magna Carta. These were approximately eight and a half by 11. And I just tore them in half and folded them. You wanna tear them because the beauty of this paper is these gorgeous edges. And these are going to line up in the center like this and I'm just going to take waxed linen thread and a carpet needle and an awl and I'm going to poke some holes in here and bind this together like a little hand bound journal and it is just going to 